All right, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are calling in from. My name is Nick Ezzo. I'm the v Vice President of, of Marketing here at Auditoria, and I'm so pleased that you have joined our live demonstration here today. A um, little bit of a housekeeping before we get started. Uh, if you notice at the bottom of your screen, you will have some controls on this webinar. If you would like to chat with anybody on this uh, webinar, just hit the chat button, uh, put your, your text in there and hit enter, and we'll respond to you. If you wanted to ask a question, there's a Q&A button at the bottom. You can just go ahead and uh, hit the Q&A button uh, to ask a question. If you want to raise your hand, I believe there's a raise hand button. If you've accidentally raised your hand, you want to lower your hand, just press that button again and it will lower your hand. Uh, I'm joined today here, I'm very pleased to be joined by Rob Frasconi, who is our head of solutions consulting here at Auditoria. Rob has years and years of experience in solution consulting uh, from companies like OneStream and Planful, and Rob is a self-professed recovering accountant. Welcome, Rob. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me, and thanks, everyone, for taking some time to, to join us today. All right, cool. So before we get started, uh, I would like to just kind of walk through our agenda for today. Um, we've already done our introduction and housekeeping, so let's just cross that off the list. We've got one thing done. We'll walk through some trends in transportation and logistics and how uh, technology is really shaping, reshaping and revolutionizing that field. And then we're going to walk through four challenges in the finance back office. Smart collections, vendor invoice data extraction, accounts payable or AP help desk and invoice accruals. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on each one. And then Rob's actually going to show us a live demo and see how this stuff works out, out in real life in, in, in the wild. And then we'll end with some Q&A. All right. So trends in transportation and logistics. So not too long ago, there was a, uh, a report that came out from a, uh, a company called Start Us Insights. And the, the article, which I, I could send around after this, was called Top 10 Logistics Industry Trends and Innovations in 2022. And uh, interestingly enough, the top 10 industry trends that they that they pointed out were uh, right here. And not surprising, Internet of Things or IoT is a brand new technology that's revolutionizing transportation, logistics, warehouse distribution, everything else. But number two is artificial intelligence. And we're here to, to, to show you today how AI can actually help you in your finance roles and your accounting roles in the back office. I'll tell you a little bit about Auditory and what we do in a moment. So that said, at Auditoria, we did a survey a year ago. Um, in fact, we did one two years ago, then we repeated it last year. And we asked more than 600 finance professionals, what are the things that are holding them back? What are the top challenges across all your functions? And not surprisingly, 60% of people reported that the time they spend on repetitive tasks uh, and update, uh, checking and updating data were the biggest challenge for that finance back office across AP, AR, audit, tax, everything. Another interesting stat is in terms of the hours spent on follow-ups, requesting documentation, sending communications, 30% um, 30, 30 of the people reported that they spend six to 10 hours a week doing that. And 20% reported that they spend 10 hours plus per week doing that stuff. Now, we, we've done this report two years in a row. Interesting to note, between 2020 and 2021, that's a 153% increase on what was reported um, right before the pandemic. So, you know, suffice it to say, uh, the finance teams are still doing manual work. They're spending valuable time on repetitive and clerical tasks, and we think there's a better way to do it. So why don't I tell you what that is? All right. So at Auditoria, our, our goal is to move the back office forward. So imagine, if you will, a back office without any manual data entry, little or no errors lurking in your financial data, real-time visibility for the controller or the CFO or the board on where your cash is right now, what your cash performance is. Imagine delivering amazing customer experiences or in, in this, for your carriers, for your, your suppliers, for your end user customers. And then imagine, if you will, an improved life for fi your finance professionals, your team in the back office. And that's why our goal, as I mentioned earlier, is to help move the back office forward. So we have smart bots that are, automate the AP and AR functions. Let's talk about that a little bit. So what is Auditoria? What do we do? We create smart bots. And these are you know, applications, programs, if you will, uh, that do repetitive tasks. You can think of them very much like a junior accountant on your team, um, entry level person who are doing things. There's our little bot, you know, very friendly looking guy. And he sits in between your system of record 
whether it's your ERP, your enterprise performance, uh, enterprise resource planning tool, or your um, TMS, your transportation management system, whatever your system of record is, the bot can pull data out of that. And they also connect up to your email system. And this is important to note because um, Auditoria is really the only company in, in the space that is actually has automated the email communications back and forth between your customers and your employees, your suppliers and your employees, your carriers and your employees. This is, we, we sit on top of the email box. Someone somewhere in your organization, I'm sure, has the inglorious task of sorting through a shared email at your company, whether it's called finance at your company or AP or AR. Some junior person, or maybe it's you on this call, has to go through and read all those emails and try to figure out what the person wants and fulfill those wishes. We have trained our smart bots to do that. So on the, on the, on the procure to pay side or the AP side, we have a set of skills, what we call smart flow skills, which we're calling smart vendor. And that's doing these tasks, these rudimentary tasks like onboarding new vendors, um, updating the, the tax forms, uh, acting like help desk clerks who are answering questions about where's my payment, providing um, document, documentation and evidentiary data to your, your suppliers, creating invoice accruals, which we'll see on this call. Rob will demo that for us in a moment. And then the other one we'll see today is um, vendor invoice data extraction. How do we take a PDF that comes in this email box and put it into the system of record? Well, our bots are trained in doing that too, which is a very cool skill that you'll see today. Um, autonomous order to cash side of things. We have uh, applications called smart collections, which is it, it automates the uh, accounts receivable function. So similar to a, um, a, a collector, per, you know, a person who's a, you know, a, a accounts receivable analyst or clerk who has to go out and ask for payments from people. We have bots that are doing that today um, in, in many different ways. They send out courtesy notices, they send out dunning notices, they send out late payment reminders. Uh, they not only send emails out, but they receive emails and can interpret those using natural language processing, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And they can respond back to the customer with the information that they need, whether it's, you know, I need a PO or something, something else. Um, we provide intelligent payer classification for fast payers, slow payers, your key accounts, your strategic accounts, your regular accounts. We uh, have a prioritized work list, with, which Rob will show you that your collectors and your AP smart bots will be working out of. And then we provide a rich set of data and analytics for uh, collection key performance indicators. In addition to smart collections, we also partner with a company called Stripe, which allows these smart bots to actually collect the payments from, from your customers, carriers, suppliers, whomever. So we have uh, links in those payments, automated payment postings, intelligent insights, that's the, the other KPIs. We've got a configurable payments platform. And then of course we can collect payments worldwide anywhere where Stripe does business. So that's a little bit about what uh, Auditory has created um, for dozens of customers all over the world um, on the accounts payable side and the accounts receivable side. So now let's get into the fun. All right, so uh, how do we make this work? We connect up to your systems of record, your, your email account, your ERP, your TMS system. We, we select those, those devices, we train the bots, we deploy it, and we optimize. The bots get smarter and smarter. If you've heard about machine learning, um, they learn every time they make a mistake, they learn how to recover from that mistake and not make that mistake again. So let's talk about cash collections. So I mentioned briefly that we have a, uh, a skill called smart collections. Why is that important? Well, I mean, we've all heard the cliche that, you know, the, the tried and true idiom that cash is king. Well, why is that? Well, cash is the lifeblood of every company. And if you aren't managing your cash, you're really putting your company at risk. So today in, in talking to dozens of companies in the transportation and logistics and distribution space, we know that people have a, a lack of visibility in the cash performance. If your controller or CFO says, hey, what's, what's our cash position right now? You may have to go do two, three, four days of work, a week worth of work to pull data out of disparate systems all over your organization. And by the time you get that data to your CFO or controller, it's a week old. And all you can do is say, well, you asked for a cash position and here's what it was a week ago when you gave me that task. Um, we think that's a shame. And so we'll show you how we can do that in real time. Uh, DSO sometimes is increasing or trending in the wrong direction. Day sales outstanding is a reflection of how much cash is out there floating around that you are owed by your customers that you actually have access to. And what would you do if you had access to that cash? Maybe invest it um, in a new division, a new geography, a new market, uh, maybe upgrade your fleets, maybe um, upgrade your systems, maybe hire a few more people. If you're a private company, 
you know, you might, uh, you know, just upgrade things. If you're a public company, maybe you're paying a dividend to your, your shareholders. But uh, DSO is super important for us and for, for probably everyone on this call. And then last but not least, hiring and staffing issues for debt collections. We all have heard about the great resignation. And we know that kids coming out of college these days who have accounting degrees don't want to call people on the phone and ask them for money. Um, we know that to be a fact. And so our, our, our biggest challenge is how do we collect money faster without having people do it? Well, let, let me show you. I'll show you how we do it. And then Rob will actually show you the actual um, application of the SmartFlow platform and show you how it's done. So imagine if you will, that a smart bot checks your system of record, the ERP, the TMS system for updates to your customer list every, every four hours. The smart bot then updates the dashboard for you and for your boss to show you, you know, what's going on out there in the collection side of things. Then the bots send out courtesy notices, past due notices, consolidated statements to your carriers, customers that are enrolled, that you have enrolled in this, in this application. Once those go out, the customer, your, you know, who, whoever owes you money might reply to that. And they might say things like, um, I'll pay you tomorrow. I'll pay you next week. I paid last week. I'm disputing this invoice. Um, can you send me another copy of the, of the invoice? Can you send me a copy of the purchase order? Our smart bots understand all of those things because they're trained in English, business English, and finance English. If somebody says, you know, this is a promise to pay, or I'll, I'll pay you next week, the bot is smart enough to interpret that and say, okay, today plus seven days, seven days promise to pay. I'm going to write that into Auditoria and then I'll write that into the ERP or TMS system. So these are called known collections intents. There's a set of things that, that people will respond with and the bot will act on that. Um, based on what the person said. So then the smart bot will then reply to the customer and say, thank you, um, acknowledged, we'll put you down for a promise to pay seven days from now. Or if the person says, I need a, a, a copy of the invoice, the bot will attach that from the ERP or TMS and send that out to, uh, to your, your customer. So with that, I'll let Rob take the screen and uh, walk us through how this actually works in real life. Take it away, Rob. Well, thanks, Nick. I waited a few seconds, wanted to make sure everyone can see our screen. So let's walk through this, just like Nick said, in real life. The first thing we're going to do before you know, jumping into smart collections is just give an overview of the platform itself. Okay? So Auditoria is a multi-tenant SaaS-based application. So it's username and, and, and web browser anywhere in the world. So easy to get in, you know, based on security. Navigation is super simple. Over here at the left, you see a number of different icons. We're gonna spend some time today in this area called smart flow management. That's where we're configuring the individual like applications, if we will, you, we call them smart flow skills. Auditory is not an RPA tool. We do utilize some concepts of RPA under the covers, but it's meant for business users to be able to configure. And we'll see this in real life. We'll configure a couple of these and we'll start with the collections process itself, okay? When we go down the list here, we see individual dashboards for different parts you know, of the platform. Smart collections, we'll talk about, we'll get into in a minute. Smart vendor for our procure to pay and vendor management activities. So we'll see that a little bit later when we get into the latter part of the demonstrations today. We talked about the ability of, of the business to, to set up and configure smart flow skills. It doesn't really end there because they can also you work and be responsible for the administration of the, the application itself. So if you look into things like system settings, we see things like connections to other systems. And that's really important because when you think about Auditoria, really should be thinking of it as a system of engagement. From a collections perspective, our number one priority is to get cash in the door as fast as possible. That's what we're trying to do for you. That's what we're trying to do for all of our customers. To do that, we're sitting, and you saw some of those diagrams and, and slides that, that Nick shared, we're sitting in between the system of record and the, and the either customers or, or vendors to really broker those conversations and those transactions. Where we set them up is very simple. It's in system settings. You can see we have some systems set up already. We've got a couple of ERPs. We've got a couple of mailboxes. When you think about the mailboxes, what we're really doing here is we're authorizing the system, we may, we may refer to them as the bots, to listen in on those mailboxes so they can take some action, so they can apply those concepts of natural language, understanding and processing like Nick talked about, and then one of the most powerful features of the Auditoria platform. 
To set up any new connections, very, really simple. We've got a button here, it says add new connections. And we see a, kind of a big button colorful approach. If it's a list of ERPs, we click on that. We see ones that we support out of the box from an API perspective, but we also support virtually any ERP using other integration methods. Maybe we wanna take a look at the mailboxes. Maybe we're gonna set up an Office 365 account versus Gmail. I think you get the idea. So, you know, simple approach, easy for, you know, business users to be able to, to navigate and own. The other thing that I'll point out here is that, I'll go back to the, the ERP here, is that we are bringing in data every four hours on demand and at night. And that's gonna be important because especially in, in logistics and transportation, we know there's a heavy volume of invoices. So we wanna make sure that you, your system is as up to date as possible. So really great for businesses that have those high volumes of invoices, okay? I'm gonna switch gears over here. We're gonna to start to kind of make our way into this concept of, of smart collections, but we're gonna start here in this particular screen. And we're gonna talk about the data that we're gonna bring over because the data that we're bringing over, we're syncing over from the ERP and we can see what that status is. We've got a connected ERP, so we're good, that's green. We've got those mailboxes connected too, so the bots are listing in on those. But that data that we're bringing in could be in the form of a KPI, and we can see some of those across the top here from left to right. It could be graphics, it could be charts, it could be more traditional, traditional columns and row type data as well. And we see that a little more when we switch back over into the data and to-dos. The first thing I'll point out is as we're speeding up that collection process, we're enabling the auditoria system to do more and more so that the human staff really has to do less and less but there are gonna be times where the system needs to hand off some of those tasks to humans. And that's where work lists, prioritized work lists really come into play. So we see a number of boxes here. So there's some things that are being done here. Maybe we've got some customers that were added to the ERP or maybe the TMS system. And, 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 and this is Auditoria's way of saying, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Junior Accountant, you've got some new customers that you can en enroll, click review and enroll, make that happen. Maybe it's an invoice dispute where you want Auditoria to be able to listen in on the mailbox, understand when an invoice, a dispute is being, an invoice is being disputed, excuse me, update that in the records in the system. We'll see that today, but then hand it off to the staff to take care of, right? So just a couple of examples of where that handoff to human is gonna take place. Remember, these are the exceptions, you know, the rules that we're gonna automate, you know, most of the work that's gonna be done in that collection process. Let's take a look at some of the data from a customer perspective. We look at this from a carrier perspective as well. What we have here is really a summarized view of the world of customers being synced in from you know, systems of record. We talked what those could be to, or talked about what those could be today. We can see that we've got a couple of customers that are enrolled. So kind of the first jumping off point, you don't have to enroll all your customers. You can make that determination in terms of how they're enrolled and you know, what that dunning is gonna look like. Is it gonna be email-based? Is it gonna be integration to you know, one of your carrier's portals? You know, something of that nature. To the right, we see the aging and a summary format. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drill into this a little bit just by clicking that little eye button. I'm gonna scroll down here. And what we're gonna see is you know, all that data that's coming over, in this case, for one particular customer, one particular carrier. So a list of invoices and not just the invoice records, but also the PDF of the invoices themselves. And they could be customized, you know, based on the, your particular system of record ERP, their statuses, payments, payments that could be, you know, be being made by other sources or our smart pay offering that Nick talked about as well. So you have visibility into those payments and all the other invoice type information you would expect, including things like promises to pay. You see that we call these scheduled payment dates. And we'll see this, you know, in as we kind of get into the demo a little bit more, we'll see where this promise to pay date originates. We'll also take a look at where this dispute originates as well. Now, all of these actions are being recorded in the system, really kind of in the bowels of auditoria, you know, deep in the database. What we're seeing here in the yellow, you know, the yellow notepad is not only the ability to, for you know, your collections analysts to be able to add any kind of notes that they want, but we're also seeing a recording of all the different actions that we've taken or that the system has taken. You can see there's quite a long list here, and we'll dig into that in a little bit once we get a little bit further into the demo itself, okay? 
All right, so let's do this. We're gonna, you'll notice up at the top here, there's a couple of different mailboxes opened. One is for AP, that's you know, obvious for smart vendor, for the AP side of the house, for procure to pay, the other is for AR. We're gonna dig into that in a minute. The first thing I wanna do, and this kind of serves as, as, as kind of an example of how any of the skills are set up, I wanna actually go in here and show you, you know, how this skill is actually set up. You know, how do we actually configure these things to run? So we haven't really looked at the screen too much. I kind of skipped it on purpose. This is called the Smart Flow Management screen because this is where we're configuring the different types of skills. Okay? The, the kind of bluish bars or bands, if you will, really just represent the major business process areas. Procure to pay, order to cash. We have some capability on the record to report side as well. And then within those bars, we see the individual, what we call smart flow skills. So think about these kind of individual intelligent applications, if you will. And we can see the ones that are set up for procure to pay. We'll come into this you know, at, in, in a later point today, and we'll set up one of these as well and dig into that part of the demo. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at this concept of smart collections. And we can see that when we hover over any one of these, we see a description of what the skill is doing. In this case, it's the, the bots are gonna be sending out courtesy noticing and dunning. We're gonna manage that bi-directional communication, right? The one, if, I, if you walk away from anything or with anything today, I want you to walk away with that. You know, our ability to manage that bi-directional communication, we really feel is superior to anyone out there in the market, okay? And some additional information. We can see where it's running, which ERP system, if you have a more complex environment, you know, in which entity, if you want, need to be able to configure you know, different, differently across for different customers or different carriers across different entities. So we have that visibility. But let's actually just take a look at how we set this up. So we'll run through kind of a, a fictitious setup here. I'm just gonna click on the button and it's gonna open up a series of screens. We see a wizard-based approach at the top and we see these big buttons that we remember we saw over here in administration. These are the, the systems that we're gonna connect with. Remember, we're a system of engagement we need, we're gonna rely on other specific systems. Let's select ERP one, we'll default to the next you know, legal entity within that. And this is really, really important here. This shared AR, AR mailbox, we want to make sure the bots are authorized to listen in because that's, that's where all the traffic is gonna be generated. And that's where they really need to have their ear to do their job. So we'll see that in a minute as well. When we move on, we're getting into this concept where we're setting up not only the dunning cadences, but also determining how the customers are gonna fall into different customer classifications. In this case, we have two different classifications and I'll show you some of the things that we can do there, but think about you know, the most typical in our experiences, how are they power customers paying? Initially, you know, we will be working on this with you during an implementation. Over time, the bots will be able to understand and, and really detect you know, payment, um, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. You know, the bots will be able to understand you know, payment cadences and history you know, on a customer by customer basis to help to more intelligently classify the different customers, slow payer, fast payer, average payer, et cetera. Again, remember you could have customers that you don't enroll at all into the process. Okay? So we've got a couple of different classifications. If you want to add an additional one, we can see a little plus button. You're in complete control of that. In this case, our regular accounts are running a dunning you know, cadence on an invoice basis based on due date with you know, particular you know, re reminders or cadences in, in mind. So if we click on the little uh, calendar, we see 0, 3, and 10. That's our courtesy dunning. And then we see 7, 14, 21, and 30. So every one of our customers that's going to be put into the regular classification will, you know, will have dunning notices sent out per this cadence. Maybe we've got some additional accounts that we want to, for which we want to run dunning on more of a consolidated basis. I'm going to put my accounts into there and we're going to change up the way that we run the dunning process. So multiple different dunning processes, in this case, at the customer classification level. But remember, we could also do that at the ERP, you know, company or legal entity level. And you can decide, hey, we may have some white glove customers or carriers that we don't want to enroll at all. So lots of different configuration options there. Let's move on from there. I'm just going to click continue. You know, the system walks us through everything that needs to be done. This is super important because 
on the left are the cadences that you just saw set up. In the middle is where you're determining how do we want to communicate with those customers? There's a little edit button right here. This is the email template. To the right is kind of a preview of what that, temp what that email is going to look like in a little bit prettier format. It's primarily text, but there is the ability to bring in fields from the ERP, fields from Auditoria. So let's say you want to, you would rather reference the invoice number directly in that subject line. That's a pretty simple thing to do. Let's scroll down here because there's more important information. I'll make my screen a little bit bigger there. We can see some of those variables. And here's a really important thing that I'll highlight here, the ability to include attachments. So you know, from a default perspective, we're gonna provide the ability to, to include invoices and statements for customers, our customers you know, in the transportation and logistics space. You know, we're going to want you to be able to include things like proof of delivery, you know, and that's going to be separate from your invoice process. So you may send out invoices that have those proof of deliveries. Maybe they don't. You may want to determine, hey, in the dunning process, I'd really like to include those. There'll be a little button down there that can get checked. And then the other piece of it, I always treat this as a little bit separately, is what happens when you get questions from those carriers? What are they requesting? What are those types of documents? We're going to help you store those documents so that the bots can intelligently retrieve those you know, based on the different types of questions you have you know, based on your specific business and circumstances. So let's continue from there. And the next thing we're gonna do is just determine, hey, what customers do we wanna enroll this for? You know, maybe it's gonna be all the customers, maybe it's not, maybe it's gonna be particular ones. You have that choice, you have that complete power. Once you've made that determination, you're really ready to go. Right, so it's up and running. It's listening in on that mailbox. If we come back to the screen, we can see that we've got that instance running. Now we can really move to the next piece of it. Okay. We are that system of engagement. We talked about that a couple of times before. Because of that, you know, we are gonna rely on, again, that system of record and really broadly speaking collaboration, you know, more tactically speaking, we're talking about email boxes and typically cloud email. And it's pretty rare to run across the Outlook on-premises email, but if that's where you're at, you know, let us know and we can certainly work with you on that. In this particular example, we have configured a Gmail, a Gmail um, email box, right? That could be Office 365 as well. And when you take a look at this, it's no different than any Gmail account that you've ever used, you know, for business or for personal, you know, circumstances, okay? I put this kind of on purpose into a compact mode. We can expand some of these. We can see we've got a number of emails here, just like six or seven. Every one of them has already been, they've been labeled. What those labels represent, and Nick talked about this a little bit, it represents the, the system taking some action based on you know, what is written in the body of the email and or in the attachment, right? That's the intent detection that, that Nick was talking about. We'll get into that in a minute, okay? Once it's done that job, it, it's labeling the individual emails so the system knows what to do next, okay? Let's look at an example. We'll look at a couple of different examples here. The most robust one here with, well, they're all with Chris. And then we'll look at the, the dispute example above here. You're gonna see me go between actually the mailbox itself, but we'll also come back into Auditoria. We can just get this set up right now. And we'll come back into this concept of the customer explorer. You know, the carrier explorer. Think about this being that collector CRM tool, if you will. And we'll just go back up into Rich Industries because that's the customer that Chris works for. Okay, you can see Chris's email right there. So let's go back into the mailbox. Let's open up this email that we talked about. And what we can see here are you know a couple different pieces of the conversation. The first piece of the conversation is just the Dunning email that's going out. You saw that. You saw how you could set up those email templates. You, know, you saw how you could set up the cadences, assign different customers to different classifications. All of that is fully in your control and fully configurable, okay? The other option, like I said earlier on, is to connect directly to a customer portal or you know, to a carrier portal, I guess, if, if you will, for that subset of your carriers, your customers that use that approach. But we'll talk about this for today, okay? So there's the Dunning email. The response is coming directly back from Chris, and Chris is asking a couple of different things. And what, he's, what she's asking, it seems kind of you know, just ordinary run of the mill. We've scheduled a payment for three weeks from today. Can you send me a copy of the invoice? Take note of when that was done, January 27th, just a couple of weeks ago at 8.29 in the morning. Two minutes later, the bot's already taken action. 
and it says, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we've got a invoice, we've got the invoice copy per your request. It's actually down here at the bottom of the email. Here's the PDF. So really we've checked the box on the one request here. The other piece of information that we're gonna work with here is that promise to pay, that scheduled payment date, okay? We'll go back into the Customer Explorer to take a look at where that's done, but let's reinforce a couple of really super important concepts here. Nick already talked, talked about them already. This is plain English. This is a, you know, represents a human person you know, sending an email. Everything else is done by Auditoria. And the reason that we can do this is because of this concept of natural language processing and understanding. The bots come fully trained. They understand semantic English. They understand business English and then finance and accounting English. And it talked about these things. So it can understand what a dispute is, what an invoice is. It can read attachments and understand, you know, if an attachment is a certain type of a document. You know, we'll talk about that on the AP side for invoice processing. But it's that technology, it's that sophistication that enables the system to be able to understand what's being written, classify what that intent is, that's that intent detection that Nick talked about, and then tell the system what to do, okay? Two pieces here, process that scheduled payment date, go grab a copy of the invoice. We saw this in action already. If we go back into the console, which we really already saw, I pointed out, there's invoice 423, there's the filling in of that scheduled payment date. Right. This was done by the system, not by the junior account. We're in, trying to enhance their experience and replace some of the mundane day-to-day -day tasks and automate those. Okay. The other, and we'll kind of do this in reverse order, example that I'll show is that dispute um, you know, raising that's going on. So for invoice number 424, we can see that we've logged a dispute. And it is true, you know, the human staff could co go in here and log a dispute. This one was actually captured through that email inbox. We'll also notice that for that invoice, we turned off the automatic notification, right? That's a default response here. Until it gets resolved, remember the prioritized work list cards, the bots will detect what the, what the dispute is, they'll log it, the amount, turn off automatic, automatic notification, and turn it over to the human staff, the junior accountants, to take from there and resolve those, dis those disputes. Where did it start off from? back in that email box. We'll close out this conversation, go back up to the one that we previewed, where we can see, again, the Dunning email going out. In this case, there's a couple of attachments. This could be that proof of delivery, other documents you know, specific to your industry. There's the logging of the dispute or lodging of the dispute, depending on how you wanna look at it, by Chris. Here's the response email going back to Chris saying that you know, the system acknowledges uh, that the dispute was, was raised. And we've already seen it being updated you know, directly within the customer console itself, okay? So we'll go back to kind of our home screen here, just a little bit on you know, smart collections with Auditoria. Remember those key concepts. We don't take a portal first approach. We make the assumption that every business that we're talking to has a system of record, typically it's an ERP. Every business has a communication tool, typically it's a cloud email. We're gonna place Auditoria in between those things to manage that bi-directional bi nature of that relationship. I'm gonna stop there, Nick, and I'm gonna put it back to you for the next section. All right, sounds great. Thanks, Rob. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again here, and we will jump into our next uh, application, which is uh, invoice processing. So I'm gonna kind of pick up the pace a bit. We're at the bottom of the hour. We try to get through uh, three more of these things uh, pretty, in pretty rapid fire succession. So what are some of the challenges that companies like yours are having with taking process, processing invoices from your vendors and suppliers? Well, number one, you get a PDF in that e email box. Um, somebody's got to key that thing in. Somebody's got to look at it, copy, paste, eyeball it, you know, and, and they just have to do manual data entry. Um, and of course, when you do that, errors and omissions occur with human beings all the time. It's time consuming, it's manual, it's cumbersome. It's a whole lot of no fun. Nobody likes to take data off of PDF and key it into the, the system of record. So how do we get these invoices imported automatically into the system? Well, what Rob's gonna show you is the following sequence. Our smart, bots, our smart bots are gonna check your ERP or system of record for your current vendors every four hours. And if a known vendor sends you an invoice to that shared email box, the, 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 the smart bot will pick it up. First of all, they'll validate the key elements of that invoice, all the different things on it, the date, um, the amount, the line items, the address, the vendor ID. 
um, the smart bot will then extract those key elements from the invoice and validate this is not an existing invoice. It's not a duplicate. Uh, how does it do that extraction? Rob will show you, but um, back in the day, this used to be called optical character recognition or OCR. Now there's an advanced version of which is advanced version of OCR, which is called computer vision, which allows you to read structured and unstructured data um, through an AI and machine learning based system. The smart bot then prepares the draft invoice record using those elements that they extracted from the PDF, augment the invoice with coding elements that you may have configured within Auditoria or from historical records that it sees in, in the ERP system. Vendor invoice comes in, it, it can look, the smart bot can say, hey, well, every time we get an invoice from this one vendor, it always goes into this account and this category and this it has these notes. The, the bot is smart enough to figure that stuff out based on other invoices and apply that same logic. And then finally, um, either automatically or after a human approves it, the smart bot will then create the new invoice record in the ERP system. And with that, I'm handing it back over to Rob to show us how it works. All right, Nick, you're fast. I'm gonna be fast, I promise. Let's go ahead and, and share my screen here and let's jump back into it again. All right, so we already, you, you've got an overview from a navigation perspective. We're not gonna redo any of that. And we've talked about this concept of smart flow skills. And we've talked about the different types that we're gonna provide. For the rest of today's demonstration, the time that we have today, we're gonna to really be talking about the upper part of the screen, the autonomous procure to pay. Now in this regard, hey, we're still connecting those systems of record. We've got that ERP connected. We're still utilizing that collaboration system, that email system, but we're talking about different type of data. So to look at some of this data, I'm gonna go into this concept of smart vendor. We're gonna filter it a little bit differently because I wanna look at a very specific vendor. Still have the concept of the handoff to human. That's going to be ubiquitous across the platform. We're going to go into our vendor explorer now, and I'm going to specifically look at AAA products. It's one of the fictitious vendors that we're going to talk about today. Now, this is where your junior accounts would typically spend a lot of their time, you know, in the bowels of, you know, the AP systems, right? This is a sync from those systems, you know, from the ERP, where we've got our header information, you know, for AAA products, the total balance for all the invoices, the aging from a summary perspective, we're breaking that down into the details. We see the vendor contact details. We may see what's called the bill classification defaults. Think of these as the default header level coding for any AP invoices. We can also code and we can also extract at the line up, line up level and we'll see that as well today, okay? Down below, we see a, a detail of all the invoices. In this case, 100% of them are open. If we had a breakdown between open and paid, we'd see this you know, shaded bar look a little bit differently from a visualization perspective. But same concept applies in terms of the audit log and what the system is capturing. It's capturing the notes. So these are your AP, AP analysts, but it's also capturing um, tasks that the, the bots have actually performed on behalf of you and your staff. In this case, we can see, and we'll talk about this in the next section, that a payment inquiry was received you know, through the email box and the bots took some action. This is actually part of our AP help desk. I figured I'd show it here since we're gonna be here anyways, okay? So that's what I wanted to talk about from a data perspective, right? This is how the, the, the system can determine what is that list of known vendors? It needs to understand that. It needs to be able to compare that information with emails coming front through the email box and those specific contacts. As a side note, it's also going to use that information to determine, hey, when do we want to, to talk about vendor onboarding? Now, it's not a topic we're going to get into today, but it is something that we do offer, you know, from an auditory perspective. Okay, let's look at, you know, how simple and easy it is to set this up. This is a couple of clicks, same familiar screens you saw before, same icons. We're just determining, hey, what are those systems of record that we're going to utilize? what is that shared mailbox that we're gonna be utilizing and that we're gonna let the bots listen into? And then how would you like to integrate that information back to, in this case, the ERP, but it could be another system of record. Do you want it to happen automatically or do you want it to happen on a manual basis? We click continue, the system's ready to go, right? So it's a very simple process in terms of setup, okay? The next piece of what we're gonna talk about today is you know, how that information is coming in you know, from the mailbox, okay? So let's go into our Gmail setup. In this case, we're looking at that AP mailbox before we were looking at our AR mailbox. 
Same thing applies. It's just a Gmail account. Your users could have access to it. They could send messages to customers and customers you know, ideally won't know the difference, but those, those user rights will still apply. We can see from a labeling perspective, the system has already read the emails and they've labeled them based on those known intents. We've got some invoices that the, the system has been processing, but there's some other information in here as well. We may get, we talked about the, our, our uh, invoice accrual process. We've drafted a, 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 a journal entry based on the information there. You know, maybe we've got an invoice that's coming into the mailbox, but it already exists, right? It's from a known vendor. We understand, we, we acknowledge who the contact is, both from the email perspective and from the attachment perspective, but it's already been recorded. It's a duplicate, right? So the system is smart enough to be able to make those understandings. And again, it can do that because of these, this concept of natural language processing and understanding, but also document classification among others. And we'll talk about those briefly. I have a slide just kind of walk through some of those basic concepts, okay? So in this particular case, we can take a look at really any one of these invoices. I'm gonna look at these because the, one, the, the two down below have already been recorded, so I don't wanna look at those. So let's pop this open. And it's pretty simple, right? There's not a lot going on here. We've got a known vendor. That's AAA products. We've got a contact at a known vendor, you know, who's also known, that's Lex Mathis. And Lex has sent us an invoice. We can pop open that invoice. It's a PDF. It happens to be invoice number 38. So that's being sent to the email box. The system is processing and understanding that it's a known vendor. It's recognizing that it is actually an invoice itself. And that's what I think is, is super powerful that I kind of wanted to walk through here, just like a couple of things. You know, in, in other demos from a, a more, when we have more time, we actually run this in real time. We send, you know, a, a number of PDFs to the mailbox and you can actually watch it process. Let's talk about some of the things that are going on here. So some of these will apply, you know, to every part of, of Auditoria. They are ubiquitous and some will be more, you know, uh, uh, you know, akin to the procure to pay side of the business. We are a multi-tenant, you know, SaaS vendor. So that does mean that even though, we, we are delivering our software on that basis. We are flexible, we're scalable. We can, we can you know, configure different you know, settings at the individual tenant level, especially for things like the different formats of different you know, vendor invoices that you may do business with. The different fields that you need to extract that customer B of ours doesn't need to extract. That's gonna be super important. So it's not a one size fits all. We kind of beat the dead horse here with natural language processing. It's a huge deal. It's part of the understanding of what's going on in that message, you know, determining what that intent is based on, you know, how the systems are already pre-programmed so the system can take action. In different parts of the world, we all know that, you know, currencies are different, not just currency code and currency symbols, but the usages of, you know, periods and decimals and commas. The system's smart enough to understand that vendor invoices from certain parts of the world are probably gonna look a little bit differently. So they can be trained and they can learn as they go you know, about those differences. We're gonna be embedding and extracting, we're gonna be extracting you know, data from embedded attachments, invoice attachments. Nick talked about this concept of OCR, we're going well beyond that. And we're applying concepts of computer vision. We are actually using multiple methods of OCR under the covers and in modeling out the best possible extraction rate, you know, based on the different methodologies and choosing that. All that's happening in real time. We don't see this as business users. That's what the system is doing. That document classification piece, the understanding that, hey, an invoice has certain characteristics. It, has, it probably says invoice on it. It has an invoice date. It has an invoice due date. It has an invoice number. The system is going through and making determination that, hey, this is a picture of your cat. And this is a, an actual invoice that you need to process. That ERP coding we talked about before, defaulted from the header level information that we saw earlier, but also learned over time, of course, the ability to edit that information by your staff, you know, initially, especially as you're getting going, as the system's learning what those defaults could be, which really ties into that, that, prediction, that machine learning and prediction you know, capability. Over time, the system will be you know, smart enough to understand that invoices that it sees on a regular basis will have that identical coding, okay? Let's take a look at what that looks like within the uh, two different contexts here, within the context of how it gets extracted into Auditoria. And then you'll notice I have a little icon over there that's open and how, what that looks like, you know, back into kind of a sample ERP. So the first piece is I'm gonna go back into Auditoria 
in this concept of data management. And we can see on this screen, there's two kind of folder tabs, if you will. One says active data right here. The other says data written to the ERP. So we have a couple of examples that we've actually you know, integrated back into a system of record. There's, a, there's multiple different you know, components to this screen here. In this case, we're talking about vendors, you know, vendors that we are setting up based on our vendor onboarding process. We're actually not gonna talk about that today. General entries that we may get to you know, with respect to our invoice accrual process. We're gonna focus really right down here in vendor bills. And what we'll see here that from an active perspective, you know, here's an invoice that was recently sent into that shared mailbox. We can take a look at that. We can look at its header level qualities here. We know that it's an invoice. We know that the system properly used document classification to make that determination, what the invoice number is, the due date, the currency code. If we drill and take a look at you know, some of these further details, we can see all the header information that applies to that invoice. We can also see a copy of the invoice itself. We can scroll down, scroll in, kind of zoom in and out if we need to. If we go down below, we can see the details of the invoice itself. So not just the header level information, the fact that it's $1,500 total and that there's you know, $100 of sales tax, but the fact that the line items of the stuff that we actually bought are extracted and show up as well. If we edit that, we can see that you know, these have drop downs. These are categories and you know, dimensions or segments, if you will, depending on what your, your, uh, your, the languages that you utilize. These are being synced directly back from the ERP. Right. This has already been this has already been updated automatically because the system has learned over time that when we're buying stuff from AAA products, it's typically coffee filters and coffee cups and things of that nature. It's remembering these selections that were made before. OK, if we close that out and we take a look at you know, some of the ones that we've already processed, we can see a very similar setup. We go into, well, just, I'll skip this for now, but if we went into view details, we'd find well, we can click on this. We have some time what this looks like. But we also know that we can't edit anything because this information has been written back to the ERP system already. We also have a history of, in this case, you know, it's not a very long you know, conversation because it's one email going back into you know, to the system, but we have a kind of transcript of that connection to the email box itself, okay? Once that piece of the pie is done, we can determine, hey, do we want to run or do we want to download? Excuse me, let's go back to the active data because that's where we need to do that. My apologies. We'll go back to vendor bills. We'll click on the one that has not been either downloaded or written back, and we can make some determinations. You know, maybe you've got an existing process where you want to be in complete control and upload a CSV file. We can support that for integration. Maybe you want this, we want to be able to control them all on the screen and then write them back to the ERP. Or remember, there was that option where you could just have them processed, extracted, and written back to the system automatically. You know, once that's done, we come into our kind of representative ERP system and we see both of those invoices, invoice number 38 and invoice number 39, which includes you know, the line item details that were extracted from, there's our janitorial services. Actually, let's open this up a little bit more extracted directly from that, well, I'm struggling here, getting this open, there we go, was, which was extracted, excuse me, directly from that invoice. That's what I was looking for, the memo, our coffee filters, our coffee cups, and then our sales tax, okay? So a little bit, a little bit quick, you know, it, admittedly on the, the invoice extraction, you know, piece, but you think about what we're doing here, right? We are applying more advanced concepts of you know, computer vision above and beyond what's been traditionally done from an OCR perspective. And what that means is just increased accuracy, right? So we're handing large volumes of invoices, extracting data from particular fields. The bots are learning over time who those common vendors are and, and what those vendor formats look like. Because we're using some more advanced technology with respect to this, you know, we're seeing extraction rates into the 80 percentile, into the 90th percentile, Versus historically, where it's probably been around that you know sixty to seventy you know five ish percentile range. Okay, Nick, I'm going to send this back to you, and we'll see if we uh, have some time to uh, cover maybe AP help desk before we sign off today. Sounds good. Let's let's do that. Um, all right. So um, let's talk about one more skill. This is the final one we'll talk about today. Uh, this is AP help desk. So challenges in in accounts payable departments. Probably everyone on this call, if you work in AP or general finance, you know that you've got vendors and suppliers who are constantly bombarding your team 
asking, where's my payment? Where's my payment? Where's my payment? Where's my payment? Um, that is a huge time suck to all accounting teams worldwide. It's a drag. Um, somebody has to go look it up. They have to find, you know, try to, try to research it, figure it out, um, and send that information back to the person. Our bots do this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if somebody sends an email into our bots asking for payment uh, at two in the morning, the bots will say, yep, it'll, it's, it's slated for a check run on Friday. You should get the payment through ACH on Monday. Um, as I mentioned, it's time consuming to research and reply, and it does steal time from other strategic tasks that your team should be working on. So how do we handle these vendor requests without involving staff to, you know, to go research and find them out? Well, I'll walk you through what, what Rob's going to show you, which is just seven quick and easy steps here, and then we'll, we'll call it a day today. I'll send out everybody's uh, Grubhub gift cards. Um, so first of all, the AP uh, Help Desk SmartBot checks your ERP or system of record for the vendor list every four hours. So we've got uh, 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 the most recent refreshed version in there. If a known vendor that's on our list sends a request to that shared inbox, the SmartBot picks it up and reads it. Smart, the SmartBot uses NLP or an LU, natural language understanding, to determine the intent. What are they looking for? Are they looking for payment status? Are they disputing something? Um, and then the smart bot looks up the invoice in the ERP system and creates an email with the info information that the person requested. The smart bot can also attach any supporting documentation like an invoice copy or a PO so that um, you know could be paid or whatever. Um, and then um, the smart bot will also ask for clarification from the vendor if that record's not found. Like, hey, you know, I haven't found you know your, your company. Do you do business by some other name? And then the smart bot will then reply to the vendor with the information requested, all in real time, seven days a week, 24 seven. And with that, let's do a quick demo and bring it home, Rob. Awesome, let's do it. So Nick just talked a little bit about our AP help desk skill. He talked about what's running behind the scenes. I'm gonna do kind of a quicker version of what we did before. We'll just point out you know, where this is gonna reside. It resides in our, our smart vendor you know, suite of smart flow skills. It's right down here, AP Help Desk. You can see as we're hovering over that, it's explaining what the system is doing and tells us where it's running. The data that it's gonna be relying on again is what you saw before. So we go back into our vendor explorer and we go at, back and take a look at AAA products we can see that same information, you know, the vendor details, the bill classification defaults for the data extraction that we just talked about, all the invoices and their status that exist, because this is where it's gonna pull from. And we can see that the bot has taken some action. Okay, It's taken some action on a specific request. And that request is, you know, what is the most common thing, you know, that request you get, you know, from your, you know, from your vendors. Of course, it's always gonna be a little bit different. Right now we're focusing on kind of that number one ask. And it really sits, when we look at the actual mailbox itself, this example you know, shows really what's going on here. Let's open up that example and let's walk through it. Again, we can see that the system has labeled, you know, labeled that email based on its reading of what's going on. And the first piece of it is the number one question. We've sent you a whole bunch of invoices. Can you give us an update on those invoices? Because of all that information resides in Auditory, I remember every four hours on demand and every night, it's syncing all the different vendors and all the different you know, vendor invoices, whether or not they are paid. So it's, re it's maintaining that list. So it's not a big ask for the system to be able to read that, understand that because of those concepts of you know, the language understanding that we've talked about numerous times today, and then reply back quickly. So, 453, it gets a request. Two minutes later, it processes a request and it sends it back to Lex at AAA Products. Thanks for your inquiry. We've checked our system. Our default is for 90 days. We've gone back and we've looked for the past three, three, or three months. And here are all the invoices that we show in our system you know, for your vendor account. Invoice number two, invoice number three, invoice number four, and so on and so forth, including the, its payment status, and if, if it was paid, you know, the, the method by which it was paid, okay? What that's doing here, again, this is one particular example, you know, that's eliminating, you know, all, you know, it's eliminating phone calls back, emails back, you know, again, kind of that drudgery that the human staff has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And just kind of goes without saying, you know, in, in your world, you probably have other requests that you are seeing, you know, from your vendors. We'd love to be able to talk to you about that. 
and talk to you about how we can configure Auditoria to handle those requests. But at the end of the day, it's that ability to be able to process those emails, read the, the context of the email through the text in the body of the email or an attachment to determine you know, that context, you know, label it in terms of you know, the intents that it can understand and then have the system take action. All right, on the AR side of the house, we're dealing with lots and lots of invoices. We're dealing with you know, integration into portals. You know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of time spent you know, in, in, with the focus being on you know, collecting cash as much as possible. On the AP side, we're dealing with you know, similar but different issues. But the common theme here is really the way that we, I, I feel, we feel the way that we will tackle you know, some of those issues. We're doing it not, you know, not only, or, or we're doing it by not leading with a portal first approach, we're doing it by, by acknowledging the reality that every customer uses some kind of collaboration or email system and every customer has a system of record. We're gonna place Auditoria in between, you, know, you and your vendors, you and your customers, you know, to manage the bi-directional relationship or nature of that relationship so that the system can take action and we can free up you know, a lot of your time and your staff time. Nick, with that, I'm gonna turn it back to you. We can close out. We can see if there's any questions for the last five minutes. All right, sounds good, Rob. We did have a couple of questions come in. Um, I'll try to answer a few of them in rapid fire succession before we sign off here. Um, so somebody asked, um, how do you price your, your, your offering, your, your, your service? Um, we are a SaaS-based company, so our, our software is a software as a service. It's a, a, an annual subscription for our SmartFlow platform. Once you have the SmartFlow platform, you simply pick and choose the skills, the SmartFlow skills, um, that you desire. So whichever functions you want to automate, you just pay for those skills. So Rob showed you three of them today, um, coll smart collections, um, vendor invoice data extraction, and AP help desk. Each of those are individual skills, kind of like, you know, your, your Amazon device. I won't say mine because she's behind me and she'll wake up, but um, it's similar to that. You, you, you have the platform, you add the skills. Um, someone else asked a question. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of throw this over to Rob. Rob, how much time and effort is involved with implementing a solution like this? Any, any uh, thoughts on that, Rob? Yeah, I mean, typically, you know, ex expect a four to six week timeline based on the number of skills, you know, that we're going to deploy. And but, but certainly don't look at that. That's a cycle time estimate. You know, that is not our consultants working, you know, feverishly for four to six weeks. That's taken into consideration that you all have day jobs. You know, there can be bottlenecks on, on your end decisions that need to be made. But overall, it's a very quick deployment. Good. Sounds good. And then the last question that we'll have time for um, was uh, around, you know, do you have any reference customers in the transportation, trucking and logistics industry? Um, yes, we do. I'm happy to provide those if anybody wants to, to, to you know, learn more about it. We've got several large uh, uh, third party logistics customers, uh, including a very large one down in Texas. So um, we've got a lot of experience in this space and we're building a lot of our features really around transportation, logistics, warehouse distribution and the whole supply chain. Um, you know, the whole supply chain. So um, thanks for that question. If we did not get to your question, I will I'll reply to you in email. We will make this recording available after the fact um, and we'll send that out. Um, as well as if you want a copy of the slides, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I'm happy to PDF those and send them to you. Uh, on behalf of myself, Rob, and the entire Auditoria team, I'd like to thank you for your participation today. Hope you learned something. Um, look for, I'll, I'll send those Grubhub gift cards out right after this and uh, thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.